It's Dragon Con time, which means I have tons of packages from Amazon on my front porch, and I'm trying to cram six months of cosplay work into two weeks. Because God knows it would make too much sense for me to plan. This year I've decided to do a generic Ace the Die, which is one of the magic wielders from the Wheel of Time book series. Because I'm a hardcore procrastinator, I can't necessarily spend all that time making custom patterns that fit this. So instead, I basically opt to buy some sort of like cheap dress, costume, element, or whatever, and embellish it instead. Embellishing usually comes in the form of embroidery or heat transfer vinyl. I'm gonna do heat transfer vinyl because one, it's a cheap solution, two, very easy, three, I have a new heat press to test out. Rawr, it is not a shield. Even though it may look like a Viking shield, it is not. This is the new X Tool heat press. This is the standard size, which is 12 inches wide by 10 inches deep. They also have the little one. Itty bitty, but very powerful. This one's good for getting into like the little places, the difficult things or smaller objects. This is for everything else. Also, you can see that it is not terribly heavy for I am able to lift it with just one arm. That or I've become buff. That's not true though. Both come with their own little heat resistant plates for storage. And of course, flipping it over and using it to press against if you want to do it by hand, which I'm weighty and I like to lean on things, but not hot things. So in that case, I actually have the platform. So I'll be showing you how to use the platform. I'm just gonna take this and slide this over here and bring the platform over. Again, lifting with one hand. Ha ha ha, so beefy. So holding this up really quickly so I can show you as the camera angle isn't always conducive to showing off things that are on the fringe of my room. This is basically what the platform's footprint looks like. This section here is pretty much for support and counterbalancing. So at first I thought this was gonna be a little too big for the Ikea cart where I usually keep a heat press, but it actually fits perfectly on it. As far as I know, Ikea still carries that thing. So I'll just set that down here and you can see it's its own freestanding unit. It's also swivel style. So that means it's not just gonna like use the jaws of life to lift and push down the heat plate, but you're also gonna basically rotate it out of the way so you have a much easier time accessing your work. There's also a knob right here on the top so you can adjust the pressure. Now, other heat presses that I've used, I've not been able to adjust the pressure uh, except if I wanted to turn like a really hard knob. And that was on my industrial style one that I absolutely got rid of. Mostly because I couldn't do the whole like Jaws of Life thing with it. This has more of a piston style system, so you're not necessarily going to be shutting this down and then yanking it straight up into the air and yeeting it into the wall. So I'm just gonna pull this back up into its default position and I take this bad boy and you see this little black section up here? I'm just gonna slide it into place. So I just take that and go, Oh, and shake the table. Sorry about that. The camera's attached to the table. I mean, you didn't expect like some sort of like high quality, you know, YouTube channel or anything, did you? Then all you have to do is take it and shake the table violently. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'll do all of the work in the demonstration over there so I'm not making people get motion sick watching the video. Okay, I moved it over there. So you can also get this optional part, which is the smart control system. It's driven by Bluetooth, so you can pair the two. You also just have to charge this with a USB-C cable. You can also pair the little guy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing dialed in for the HTV that I'm using, and then I'll walk you through what I'm gonna be doing to this cosplay. Oh, and what it is. Right, so I mentioned briefly that I'm going to be doing a generic Ace the Die. And Ace the Die is a magical woman from the Wheel of Time book series. It's 14 giant books. There's also a TV show, so you're welcome for that. I originally wanted to do Moraine Sedai. She's my absolute favorite character across the entire series. Unfortunately, it would have taken me a lot of time to come up with the pattern to be screen accurate. And I'm one of those people who tries to be screen accurate when possible. So instead of wasting all of the money I spent on getting a custom ring made, I decided to buy a dress off of Amazon for less than 50 bucks. And it's just this generic thing. Actually, we'll just go ahead and get it out. I even bought a hoop skirt for it. It's pretty cool. Anyway, it's super generic, right? Very plain, blah. 
So I'm gonna be embroidering a belt for it. However, I do wanna embellish a little bit of the shoulders here to add the Ace of the Dye's little emblems. So basically the Flame of Tarvalon. You might be wondering, well, why aren't you going to embroider this too? Well, the fabric's a little on the thin side and I really don't wanna have my industrial machine shred through it. Oh, chicken's done. Plus it's only $50. So why not? I mean, if I mess it up, who cares, right? So before I actually like get started with this, I wanna do a test. So I wanna take a tiny bit of the HTV that I'm gonna be using on the front of the gown and put it on the inside of the skirt, pretty much up around the back of my waistline where nobody's ever gonna see it. This will let me know if I'm going to be pressing at the correct pressure and the temperature and time. On the bright side, all the information came on a card with the X-Tool material set. So there's really not a whole lot of guesswork. It's just making sure that nothing's gonna hurt this fabric because I don't know what the heck it's made out of, but that is not cotton. All right, so let's get up under those skirts and expose one little area to the press like that or somewhere in there. Oh my God, it all looks alike. Actually, funny thing, let's just stick it on the skirt rim in the back. Now, I am personally used to having a tray come out. With this unit, I'm gonna swing it out to the side like so. You'll wanna make sure that every area on either side of the swivel is clear because the first time I did it before hitting record, I hit my lamp. So don't be like me. I'm gonna go ahead and swing everything out of the way. Kind of get that cable up under the plate here. And I'm gonna put the dress on here with a little bit of HTV so we can test it. I'm gonna take my HTV and I'm gonna just stick it in here so that I can get that pressed in. And then I'm gonna cover it with a Teflon sheet just to make sure that the material and the top of the heating element is safe. I take this guy, swing it back around. It's not actually pressed, but it is kind of rubbing up against it. So gotta be a little careful there. I'm gonna pull the handle down single-handedly, bam! And then I just hit this go button right here on the panel. Now, because I hit that go button and I had to manually push this down, that automatically tells you right now there are no auto pressing features about this. Everything is gonna be manual. So when this goes off, I have to lift this up. So here we go. Ta-da! Whee! And that did pop a little bit and go swiveling, so I probably shouldn't do that single-handedly. Don't be like me. I can remove the Teflon sheet and, and I can come in here and basically the vinyl is on there. I mean, there's not a whole lot, a whole heck of a lot that I can do with that. Uh, the vinyl is pretty much stuck. So the settings that X-Tool gave me are accurate and that's actually pretty darn cool looking. Nice little silver basically. So let's get everything prepped for the front of the dress. First to cover things, just so everybody understands, I put the pad underneath. So it's kind of like it's, it's inside the dress. The second thing to notice is there are plastic buttons. I am not putting anything over here under the heat press because that would be stupid. I don't want to press buttons. So I basically just want to put my design up around here. And you might be wondering why I'm not using this little guy. That's because I wanna make sure that the whole design which goes around the collar is evenly pressed. And I'm not that talented. So basically I use the M1 Ultra to blade cut out this HTV. This is the Flame of Tarvalon. It's the symbol of the Ace Sedai, but it's also the Ashman symbol, but you know, I die Greg. So I made this so it looks like it's going to filigree down the collar here. So I'm just gonna use the sticky side to get it placed. So that's where I want that. Now I can take this and put it in the machine over there, but again, making sure that I don't really go beyond here because I don't wanna have the buttons melt. Let's move that out of the way and get the dress over here. I'm gonna hold the skirts so they don't go flying. And we'll just get everything under there except for the buttons. So I'm gonna put the skirt kind of back that way. This would have been easier if I had just said, hey guys, let's do some socks. But no, 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 no. I had to go and do a whole ding-dang cosplay for demonstrating this thing. 
Now I'm going to take my Teflon sheet and I'm just going to put it over everything here, wiggling it into place like that. And I'm going to swing around the head and just make sure those buttons are clearly out of the way. See, everything's going to be good. The buttons are on the outside. Now I'm going to lower it Ba -da! and hit the button. There we go. Okay, we're good to go. I'm going to hold it just like that and slide it out of the way and remove the Teflon. I want to give it just a couple of minutes to cool down before I peel that plastic off. Now it's cooled off enough. I'm just going to gently peel this away. Ooh, ah, oh, the reveal. There we go. Whoop -ah. <laughs> I was worried because it started to look a little wrinkly, but that was just from pulling and of course the fabric. Now we can do the other side. We can go ahead and remove the plastic coating that is on the vinyl and go ahead and see what the Sedai dress looks like. Whoa. I always find it so cool how durable that stuff is because I know I would be ripping the shreds if someone pulled me like that. All right. Huzzah. And whoop, <laughs> there we have the gown. And I'm not going to show you the finished one. I'm not going to put this on because that's not what this video is about. But I will be updating socials with what this looks like once I'm finally finished. I'll also be recording the portion that will be the embroidered belt. Because that's going to be a whole like corseted belt thing. Like faux leather the works. Let's go over my final thoughts. There's upsides and there's downsides. As a bag maker, the biggest downside is the size. The plate area is only 12 inches wide, 10 inches deep. I've actually gotten used to having 15 by 15 inches for my heat press. Now, if you don't use larger bag pieces, probably not a big deal. But for me, it's a game changer. You'd be uh, shocked at uh, what a couple of inches will do for you, eh? I also feel like there needs to be some sort of non-skid surface or a way of keeping the little uh, pressing pad where it needs to stay. It slides around a lot but that's easily remedied by getting a silicone pad instead. So not so much of like a detriment or anything. It's also not automatic. I brought that up earlier. You have to sit there and watch it and listen for the beep, especially if you're gonna be like me and run around the room and do completely different things while it's pressing. Now let's talk about the upsides. That footprint, not as bad as I thought. It's also not terribly bulky. If I want, I can just remove this from the platform and use it handheld. The temperature also seemed to be really accurate and not taking somewhat eight minutes or so to basically come to temperature. It was pretty fast, maybe four minutes. And the build quality is actually really good. That's some really solid materials right there. It doesn't feel cheap, if you know what I mean. You also don't have to be a linebacker to pull the lever up and down. That's especially important for someone like me who's had a double mastectomy and so therefore I can't pry things apart very well without screaming. It's also a lot more stable because that platform's got those little prongs that are going out and counterbalancing with the front. And the big point, you can adjust the pressure. My other press, I can't do that without adding additional layers of fluff underneath the work that I'm trying to press. Because it does stuff automatically, but you know, you never know how that's gonna go, depending on what it is you're pressing. And I don't know if this is specific to the X-Tool or not, but usually when I plug in heating elements, it kind of goes Scooby-Doo in here with the lighting. You know what I mean, right? Like they just like start flickering, like if you have like incandescent bulbs. It didn't do that. It's really weird. Maybe I got rid of the ghost. I think if they were to ever continue adding on to something like this or iterating on it the way that they've done with the M1 Ultra, they could definitely afford to add a couple more inches to the front. Go ahead, go hog wild and make that thing 12 by 12. And absolutely get a silicone mat for that thing. Because then it's going to be a non-slip that you get to put on that platform. And your work isn't going to go like, wee. Again, not so much a big deal if you're putting it inside a t-shirt or the dress like I did. That's how you're supposed to use it. Thank you so much for coming with me on my Dragon Con prep journey. I now have to finish my Hobbit's bodice, so I gotta skedaddle out of here. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel because I'm posting all kinds of awesome things, usually awesome 
Usually people tell me they're awesome, but I guess you never know. And there's my imposter syndrome. Don't forget to leave comments and questions down below. I'll also leave handy dandy links so that you can look into the X-Toll heat press. Thank you and goodbye.